taper for a tie rod end to fit into. I had talked about camber and wanting to have my axle tipped back this way and to accomplish that we had to drop this end down this is where it was originally same setup similar setup anyway this is just a nut that I had reamed out with a taper now we have this block that is reamed out with a taper in it and this is going to get welded on up here under the bottom of the frame and that essentially tips our axle back a few degrees I'm going to do a little cleanup on these pieces and round the bottom edge off down in here before we uh, weld them onto the frame and then we'll paint it to match the frame and that'll take care of our camber adjustment on the front of the goofy car this old taper has been around for a long long time and uh, she's got some uh, battle scars on her but I have used it many times and I've probably had it myself uh, 35 or 40 years still gets the job done not only did I use it here on the goofy cart but many years ago well maybe 50 years ago I'm thinking now back in the 70s when I built my tea bucket and I used it on that for setting up for the tie rod ends to go into the um, brackets that got welded onto the side of the frame so don't throw out them old tools even though they may be a little bit worn they'll stu still do the job well before you can move forward with any project there's always a tearing down process part of it is pulling the motor out when you're going to replace the motor and we're going to make major modifications to the suspension and other things like that. Make sure I don't have anything more attached to it. I think we're free now. Yep. decided yet if we're gonna save this motor for another project or if I'm gonna put it up for sale on Facebook marketplace I don't know if it's gonna go all the way to the floor yep it did good thing yeehaw Part of my reasoning for uh, pulling the motor out, besides getting ready for the new motor, which is far from ready to go in, is uh, so I can lift the front of the frame up. And I think I can do that. Um, I'm probably going to put a bigger lug right up there in the ceiling. Let's see, I've got a hook right there. I think I'm going to put a bigger one in there so I can uh, lift the front of the frame up so I don't have to stand on my head while I'm welding on my new 
uh, radius rod brackets. And I misspoke last night when I was making the first part of the video and showing the process that I'm going through to uh, change the camber. I said camber and I kept saying camber but I was mistaken. What I was really talking about was caster. Now let me explain the difference between the two. Caster is when your front axle rotates forward or back. Positive caster, when the top of the steering axis is tilted slightly towards the rear of the vehicle, creating a self-centering effect and promoting stability in straight line driving. And that's what I'm doing by dropping the back ends of my split wishbones or radius rods, whichever you want to call them, that is tipping my axle backwards at the top because I'm looking for stability in straight line driving. I don't do a lot of uh, going around corners and don't do a lot of it going fast. But I'm wanting to at least make it to 40 miles an hour. I know it's only 3 miles an hour more than I did with that Briggs & Stratton motor. But I think with our new motor, once I have it done and have it in place and make some modifications to our um, drivetrain, that 40 miles is well within reach. reach. So, uh, negative caster, when the top of the steering axis is tilted slightly towards the front, which can make it steering easier, but can compromise stability. So we don't want that. We're putting positive caster in. Now, I kept using the term camber, and I'll put in a chart here so you can see what I'm talking about. Positive camber, that's when the top of the wheel is tilted outwards, providing better stability at high speeds, but can cause uneven tire wear. I'm not too worried about that. Negative camber when the top of the wheel is tilted inwards, offering better grip and cornering, but can lead to excessive inner tire wear. I'm not worried too much about tire wear. I'm con concerned with my stability going down the road. So um, I may have to modify my camber a little bit. The only way I could do that is by actually remaking my spindles. Uh, what we'll see. Right now I think it's pretty close to being um, straight up and down. Neutral. So it's between the two, between positive and negative. So we won't worry about that right now. We're mainly concerned about going straight. And uh, the big issue I had when I was driving the goofy car at speed was it wasn't too bad going but when I let off the gas, that thing wanted to jump to the left or to the right. And uh, it was kind of jukey. And we went through different steering boxes to try to eliminate that problem. And now we're going to work on another steering box. This one out of a 1969 Camaro. And I'm contemplating reversing the shaft in the steering box. This is the bottom of the box right here. And the steering shaft comes out the other end. But if I were to flip it around so the steering shaft would come out right there, where that is, then it would be turned in the right direction I wouldn't have to put a bell crank in. That's one of the things I'm considering. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. And I haven't made any progress on the back end. It's been cold here. Um, and I've had my heater going. And I noticed that my propane must be just about completely out. Because the flame is almost non-existent. 
So that means I need to refill my propane tank. So, uh, yeah, right now it's not too bad in here, I guess. Let's uh, take a look and see what it says on the thermometer. Here's our indoor thermometer. It says about 48 degrees. Now let's go out and take a look and see what the outdoor thermometer says. Starting to get dark, so it's about time for this old man to head in. But I wanted to get something done and uh, be able to put up a video for you all. Yeah, there's our outdoor thermometer. And it says just about 30 degrees, which is what I expected. Our high today was supposed to be like 32. So it's going down and the sun is going down. As you can see over there. And my automatic on lights have come on. So that's where we're at. And you saw the little bit of a clip of my grandson Owen here. He helped me do a lot of cleaning in here. And uh, ended up taking the two direction vise off of the big drill press, the Buffalo, and put it on over there so that it was easier for me to set it up for reaming out the blocks that I'm using from my radius rod brackets and because I had to do that I decided I might as well mount my new uh, cross slide here that uh, I'll be using when I'm doing any milling and the milling will be done on this machine here so we'll begin getting to use that again. This is mounted down here, bolted in really well. So so that's where we're at. I don't know what today is. December, uh, January 23rd, 24, something like that. We're coming down. We're getting things stripped down. My next chore will be doing my radius brackets finishing off our caster setup and that's one of the reasons I want to be able to lift the front of the frame get it right up off of the lift so I can get up under there and uh, uh, it'll be pivoting on this the blocks that I have on the back so it'll make it easier for the old man to get down in there and do the welding don't you know so until next time this is George the shade tree fix it man saying thanks for watching commenting subscribing I know I haven't been making a lot of videos lately but because it's been so cold I'll throw a couple of pictures here on the end so you can see that I haven't been just sitting around doing nothing. Uh, when it's too cold to work outside, I work inside. And one of the things I like to do, even though I'm an old man, I still like to build model cars. So I'll put a pictures of three or four of my models that I've worked on in the last... Well, in the last six months, I guess. And um, still got more to go. I got piles of them waiting for me to build. So, thanks for got a little bit, a little bit. Thanks again for watching, commenting, subscribing, thumbs up, sharing, all them good things. Till next time, this is George, the Shade Tree Fix It Man, saying bye for now.